five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. Commander Butch Wilmer there calling down to Mission Control here in Houston that the spacecraft has begun rolling into the right attitude for its ascent. The guidance, navigation, and control officer here in the room seeing good data on that. Dynamic pressure where the forces of air friction are highest, which in Sunny will shortly be passing through Mach 1, where the speed is sound. Good throttle up. Starliner and Atlas. Looking good with speeds and attitude increasing as expected. Coming up in less than 20 seconds, the solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. Good SRB burnout. Good SRB. Now the fuel in the solid rocket boosters has been depleted, the Atlas main booster stage will be continuing its burn for about the next three minutes. Good handle. Good handle. That, that call, good handle, from Capcom Joshua Kutrick, indicating that the crew now has the ability to initiate an abort manually if needed. All looking good so far. Now two minutes into uh, Starliner's flight and coming up on the solid rocket booster jettison at the two minute and 40 second mark. CLG in that good trajectory. CLG. The solid rocket boosters have now been jettisoned after seeing Starliner through its first 90 seconds of flight. Team on the ground here confirming that it was a good jettison and that the vehicle's trajectory continues to look good. Now uh, three minutes into today's flight. Atlas booster now throttling back to limit the G-forces on Butch and Sunny, uh, trying to limit that to around three and a half times the force of gravity you would feel while on the ground.
staging. To hear in the ground. Ecal's open. You have sublimator act. Ecal sub act. Ecal. Great act. Team on the ground reporting that they saw. They saw the ascent cover on top of Starliner that's been protecting the star the spacecraft's docking system through its climate to orbit. They saw that jettison as planned. Staging was good. You have good control. And now the, stage, uh, the second stage is two Centaur engines have ignited to continue pushing uh, Starliner into space, fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The next milestone that we'll be watching for is the Aeroskirt jettison. Starliner, you had good booster performance. You're up to plus 31. Plus 31. Atlas Control reporting booster performance offset of 31 seconds of ISP, or specific impulse, relative to its design baseline of around 450. All continuing to perform well almost seven minutes into today's flight. Good center. Good center. Camcon Joshua Kutrick. Continuing to pass good news up to Starliner's crew. At last one reporting that uh, the Centaur upper stage remains in good condition and is performing well, pushing them into orbit. St. John's open. St. John's. Starliner is now entering its first guided abort range where Starliner would direct itself towards a specific location in the event of abort. Uh, in this case, just off the coast of St. John's, the capital of the Canadian province of Newfoundland, Labrador. Starliner Miko converged one one colon five two eleven fifty two. Good perp, you're at thirty four to thirty six seconds. Eleven fifty two thirty four seconds. Back all letting the crew know that the main engine cutoff, Miko, should happen just about on time, about 12 minutes into today's flight. Another good indication that Starliner's ascent is taking along exactly as expected. Main engine, main engine cutoff is a major milestone marking Starliner's arrival on orbit. Still got about two and a half minutes until we get to that. With the spacecraft uh, continuing to perform well, make its way towards orbit. No action, uh, Starliner, on the LCL. That's just the system coming up into controlling mode. Outstanding. No action.
Once the main engine is cut off, the next step will be the launch vehicle separation. That's set to occur just short of 15 minutes after launch when Starliner will separate from the rocket and fly free in space for the first time. Flight Dynamics officer reporting that to this point, Starliner could potentially make an abort landing right, off the coast of Ireland. Get to the and they're uh, again uh, all continuing well, so we're not expecting to need that abort. As Starliner is rapidly approaching orbital velocity, the support region is only available for just over one minute, uh, where Starliner would just continue up to orbit after that. Thirty seconds, Tamiko. Just thirty seconds to go. Now until main engine cutoff, marking Starliner's arrival on orbit. Nominal Miko Starliner. Nominal Miko. And with that nominal Miko call, uh, that's main engine cutoff. Um, we've got good energy, meaning a good velocity for con continuing to orbit, and a good plane, meaning Starliner's trajectory is aligned with the uh, International Space Station for rendezvous tomorrow. <laughs> and with that, Butch Wilmore and Sunny Williams return to orbit. Individually, they are both Every extremely experienced four, astronauts. Colon five two fourteen fifty two. Fourteen fifty two. Uh, they're both very experienced astronauts with a combined total of 489 days in space between them. Starliner is also the third spacecraft that they've launched in. Both have traveled to the International Space Station via space shuttles and Soyuz and are now well on their way to repeating the journey via Starliner. It's also worth noting that Williams' role as pilot marks the first time that a woman has crewed a flight test of an orbital spacecraft. Uh, just a few seconds ago, you heard Capcom Joshua Kutcher calling up to Butch and Sonny. Uh, With uh, the expected time, Starliner will separate from Centaur at about 14 minutes, 52 seconds into flight, uh, just under two, two minutes from now, or one minute from now. That is actually the last major milestone for Starliner's ascent. All the hard work is done, but we need for Starliner to be flying on its own before it can begin heading towards the International Space Station. There's a slight pause in the action here while Centaur repressurizes and does some attitude control. We'll get into the right orientation to send Centaur on its way and then jettison it and move into the right orientation for the orbital insertion burn, which will come about 31 minutes into flight. No action on the cabin temp Starliner. No action. And about 10 seconds until an expected launch vehicle separation. <laughs> 